It's a pleasure to be here with my guest, Big Bang, Pierce O'Leary, uh, undefeated Irish uh, junior, junior welterweight, 140-pounder. Pierce O'Leary, great to have you on. How's camp going? How's it going, champ? Almost, Gary. I'd like to thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Um, all the way from Almighty Gary. It's, it's, it's great. It's uh it's a pleasure to have you on. Um you got, you got a pretty big fight coming up on um April 15th at York Hall. Um you know, how's camp going? How you feeling? How's the weight cut? How how you feeling? Feel um it's been it's been um it's been a great six weeks so far. I've got another four weeks to go. But um uh, yeah, I'm just like inspired, me inspired great. Um after each fight there's always something set in place for going at the next camp and this camp is perfect um probably the last previous camps have been setting things up going forward so now it's the it's kind of all the momentum now has been here you know so it just and um it's to be honest it's just less stress now at the minute that's good to hear um that you had a, an exceptional amateur career. before we get to that, i got a question the nickname big bang where did that come from? Who gave you your nickname? What's the origin of, of your nickname, The Big Bang? <laughs> um, do you know what? It was actually from a guy, um, one of my next door neighbors. He, he stuck the name on me. It was um, a kid, but always stucky, you know? And um, I was always up to no good and stuck like that. And hanging out with the olders. So, um, so anyways, I started joining boxing clubs and stuff like that. And then after since that, like I've been sparking young lads, sparking people out like in the ring at a young age. And 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 that hasn't changed. You've got what three knockouts in your last four fights now. So you've carried that power uh, into your professional career. Um, you had an exceptional amateur career. Um, before turning pro in twenty nineteen, um, you were you know, you won countless tournaments, nationals. What made you say, okay, now's the time to go pro? Like, I'm done with my amateur career, not going to go the Olympic route. What, you know, in 2019, when you signed with MTK Global, what made you say, okay, now's the right time for me to turn pro? When I was in Russia um, in, in 2019, in March, if I'm, yeah, it was March, and um, I just won the under 22 championship, um, national championships back in Dublin on um, January. So, um, Um, a lot of Vasquez, um, it was an old um, Georgia region, so I've been out there, um, had a got got had my first fight, and um, we won second fight against a Welsh guy, and um, I was being on the on the wrong end of a decision where I thought I would have thought I'd done enough to get it, and so did everyone else, um. There was a lot of complaints about it, but I was like, look, it is what it is. I was like, I can only control what's in the ring, not else at the ring. So I was like, from that that moment, I was like, ah, I'm done, I'm done. That was it. Like I never looked back. I like I'm your old amateur coach, Philip. He was he was on the trip with me, and uh, and I just said, listen, I'm done. I said, it's either give up boxing or I'm turning professional. It's it's one of them. I was like, ah, don't be so silly. He just horrors being angry, you know, because of the decision. And then um, truth me, word, and that was it. I, I went home. I never I never box amateur again and turned professional. Well, as as a fan of the sport, you know, first and foremost, I'm glad you didn't give up boxing and uh, you decided to turn professional because it's been an honor and, and a pleasure watching your career, um, you know, develop early on. It's been a really, really high level prospect with a really, really bright future. Um, you signed with MTK Global in 2019, and uh, talk about that. MTK Global hasn't been around that long, um, but they've had a really big impact on the sport and they've really guided fighters along. What's it like uh, having signed with MTK Global and, and having them behind you? It's great. It's tremendous because, uh, listen, at the end of the day, um, it's all about being, being, being gone. Like, it's all about going down the right direction, you know, and it's not being pushed too hard. I'm not, I'm not fast. Where you can take your time and slow, slowly progress as your, as your body is progressing. It's also getting bigger. So, listen, it's not all about rushing and winning titles, and that's what all fighters want. But, in the day you've got to take the time and 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 that's what mtk are doing 
it, it's been a great start to your career. That they've kept you busy. You know, you, they kept you busy even when everything was shut down for the pandemic. Um, and um, you know, you 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 built up a pretty good record. You've been fighting increasingly, you know, more and more difficult competition, better and better fighters over time. Um, you know, obviously you're a special town, and there are a lot of good Irish fighters right now. Michael Conlon, Michael Sullivan, Quigley, McCory, Dehenny. There are a lot of good fighters, but there hasn't been a really great fighter from Ireland in quite some time. Um, you know, Steve Collins, um, right, Barry McGuigan. You have the talent and the ability to be one of the great ones, one of the special ones, kind of carry that torch of great Irish fighters. Is that added pressure? Like, do you know, like, okay, I, it's kind of torch is going to be passed to me. I, I, I'm, I have the potential here to be the, you know, the next great one from my country. Like, there ain't no pressure. You know, there's no pressure at all. But if if the if they want to put the pressure on me like that, well, that's no problem. I can deal with pressure. I'll just keep performing better under pressure. But at the same time, I at the same time I want to give as much discipline and sacrifice to the people who in the sport. So. But that means I ain't cheating myself and I'm not cheating those either. So if I keep doing what I'm doing, then I'm just going to keep getting the best personality every fight. And, and, and we've gotten to see that. Now, when you signed with MTK Global back in 2019, you said that by the time you were 24, you wanted to be a world champion. Probably a realistic goal. I know there was a pandemic that kind of delayed things. You still think you're on that path? You're 22 now. Do you think you're 24? You can still get to a world title? The pandemic, it was been a bit. It has been a very, very slow journey. Um, I think it was probably what one, one or two. We're sort of having four, four fights a year, so it's a massive. It is slowly, but it benefited me a lot with me, um, with me new professional coach because Al Smith, because we got to work on a lot of stuff through the pandemic together. I was been living over here in London on my own, family back home, newborn baby. I've been living over here, a complete lockdown. No one around on my own. I'm just been living in the gym constantly, and the the benefits showed. So who you're in London now? You're training in, and living in London now. And London. who are you training with? It's good to hear camp's going well. Um, so how, how do you like how, how, how's adjusted to London? Um, and how's living uh, over in London as opposed to Dublin? Less more le- um, less distractions. All I can say, <laughs> but now nah, other than that, it's it's totally fine. It's it's a, it feels like a second home already. You know, I, I love it here, and um, I, I think I pretty much might might move the family over at one stage. So how long have is this? How long have you been working with Alex Smith, and and how's that going? Obviously, it's going well, obviously, but how long have you been w- w- in that camp? Before the pandemic, I actually believe it or not. I, I actually come home on um, the day after Patrick's Day. Okay. That was before the pandemic, so I had no fight in April, which is that was a scheduled fight. Um, so my next fight then was against Jacob Quinn. And I, I wanted to get into. We'll get into that fight next. You, you mentioned it. Um, Jacob Quinn was an undefeated prospect. You, you fought him, um, kind of during the height of the pandemic. Um. It was not a lot of sports going on, right? So, I mean, a lot of people saw that. Uh, I watched it. I saw. I was highly impressed. It was a battle of unbeaten prospects on a pretty big card. Um, do you feel like like that was your coming out party? Like that was your statement? Like Pierce O'Leary um, has arrived. Talk, talk about that fight. Well, behind the scene, I didn't know until I the fight behind the scene that um, this this goalie was meant to be the next big thing, and. Um, He's up north of England, so and so he was meant to be the next big king up there. So I never knew anything about it. I just kept growing the way, pointing down the gum shield in the gym, and um, yeah, I went out and um, I done I done what, what the coach told me to do. Just stick on him straight away, here and, on, and um, that's what I done. Stuck it out and I got him out of there. Did you ever get him out of there? You got a, like a knockout of the year, posterizing knockout in that fight. And um, early on in your career. Um, I guess that was what your fifth fight. Um, 
and it was only your second knockout. And I, I guess people said he's a good prospect, but I think they were kind of questioning your power. Do you feel he kind of set, you know settled that and, and, and said, no, my power is real with, with that? Because that knockout was vicious. It was a perfect left hook that you nailed him with. Do you think you kind of quieted the critics who questioned your power with that with that knockout? No, certainly, because I was, um, I was looking to fight all the time and not actually setting up setting up the t- setting up the timing correctly. Um, I thought going into the pro game, it's smaller gloves. Rounds are done, stuff like that. Like it's um, just. Uh, and I want to, I want to, you know, back up just a little before that. The, 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 the kind of, you know, being in the U.S., the fight that I saw that really put you on the radar, and I think it did for a lot of Americans at least, uh, was the Liam Richards fight. You were 20 years old. It was a card on ESPN, a pretty big card. Um, you're fighting a guy, you know, this is your third, this is your fourth fight. Um, you're three and zero. You're fighting a guy with 75 fights, who's, you know, doesn't have a sparkling record, but is a, is, a, is a pro, is a veteran. Um, and you absolutely schooled him. You didn't just show skills, but you showed high ring IQ, um, awareness. Um, talk about that performance, and uh, you know what did you learn in that fight, and how would you rate that performance? Because that was the one that really, like, from an American perspective, kind of put you on our radar. It wasn't actually, to be honest, it wasn't a great performance for me. Um, he, to be honest, that's that's what okay, lot. Uh, I had to walk a lot because the crowds would have been bored, you know. So I had to make it a little bit more entertaining by get in there and uh, and and much of that fight, like the way, the way you thought, you know. Interesting. And then it was after that fight that that's when you got with your new coach. That's when you got with Alex Smith. Was it was it after that fight or because that was right before the pandemic? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so you've had about three fights. So, interesting, you, you, you've really settled into your power since, uh, because you've gotten three knockouts in your four fights now with Alex Smith. So, is that something you've guys settled in on, sitting down in your punches, really committing to punches? Is that something that you guys focused on with, with, with Alex Smith and his new camp? Pros, you know, you're looking at pros coming in the gym. You don't know who's going to yeah. walk in the gym. You've got the best in the UK coming to the gym. And um, not only that, you're going around to other gyms as well. So, I'm a, I'm a sponge, so wherever you're gonna bring me, I'm gonna absorb. And um, that's what I've been doing. I've been looking at different coaches, and I've been looking at different different fighters, and how they've been walking and stuff like that. So yeah, I just bring it to my article when I'm in the ring. Then, but I've, I've got more aspired than I did back home, and um, you know, I've got the pace myself. I've got the reload. I've got to walk on. It's so, the way the amateurs was, no sprint. And uh, so, yeah, when, when I'm in the ring now, we can break in time to walk back out for another six rounds. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's, how, that's why I'm, I'm at the program this part. And that's why I need to walk. Listen, every day is a learning, learning day in the gym. Absolutely. And like you said, you, you progressed really quickly. You made a lot of progress. Uh, you know, over a, a pretty short period of time. Um, like you said, you still think twenty four or so. You you can. You know, when do you want to be fighting? Not, not, you know, you're, you're fighting increasingly difficult opponents over time. But when do you really want to be fighting the world class, world level, one forty pounders? Damn. No, no. You know, never. Like, listen. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm a boxer. I've got an ego, so. I, I don't have an ego, but I want to jump in there now tomorrow. We're me coaching and my management team. We're like, no, no, you have to hold the reins back. You can't just jump in there right now, you know. So, listen, it's all going well. Me saying you're to fight them at the end of the year, but is that going to happen? You know. So, I just think, um, listen, I just think that we we here we go. But I definitely want to fight for titles this year. Absolutely. I- the world titles are all held by one man, Josh Taylor. We can get in on your opinion on who won that fight. But if Josh Taylor does move up to 147, which it looks like he's going to, 
that's going to leave all of the belts vacated, um, which will, you know, there's a lot of good prospects at 140, obviously yourself included, but there's, you know, Dalton Smith, who we can get into this prospects in the U S Omar Juarez, um, Montana love, uh, Brandon Lee. There's a lot of good young prospects. If Taylor does vacate and go up to 147, does it kind of fast track all of you young guys to fighting for a world title? Yeah, maybe. I'm not quite sure, but if he vacates, there's a lot more options there for different fighters uh, in the weight division to, to win the belt. Uh, at the same time, it does kind of push us to another little bit of a, a higher level. Too free for that. But we've got to be in the top rank. We have we got to be in the top 15 of the rank. So, uh, so for me now, it's winning all the small belts to getting up there to the top 15. I then just being absolutely. Um... So I, I want to get into that. Um, so this, well, let's talk about Josh Taylor. Um, obviously, very controversial decision for the undisputed 140 pound belt. Um, all, all four titles on the line. A uh, lot of people think Catterall won. I thought the fight was real close. I thought it could go either way. Um, what were your thoughts on on Taylor's performance, and what did you think of the decision? Um, I didn't think Josh Taylor uh, had a great, had a great, um, a great. Unbelievable, like he made the I didn't think he was that good to be honest. So it was an amazing fight, unbelievable. Should should Jack win a chance in that fight? Absolutely, but Taylor's fault, whatever is in the ring happens in the ring, you know, but you can't control outside the ring, as I said. So Situation now, you know, because they won't like each other over that. So, and, and the amateurs, you know what I mean? It's we we can only control whatever's in the ring. The fighters can't. Whatever's else with the ring, then up to the judges. But then, it's it's their fault, you know. But uh, I I genuinely thought uh, Catra won that, yeah. That's you know again. I thought it was a 50-50 fight when they went to the scorecards. I really didn't know who was going to get the nod. I thought it was that close. Talking to most people in boxing media and just boxing fans in general, most people thought Catterall earned the decision. Um, it and, it and it went Taylor's way. Um, so I want to I want to talk about another prospect. Um, Dalton Smith is a really talented fighter. He's got a lot of power. He's got really sensational knockouts, right? Um, and he's garnered a lot of the attention. Um, do you view Dalton Smith as a rival? Is like, are you gonna have to fight Dalton Smith? Is that fight gonna happen sooner or later at some point? Yeah, um, we don't know. I don't know to be honest, because we're, we're, we're both with um, our both of us are with two different uh, management teams. So at the end of the day, his manager has a route for him to take, and my manager has a route for me to right. take. So we should avoid divert us. But at the end of the day, listen, if he has a title, they're related, and then support each other, you know. Well, he's gone. I'm Irish and he's British, so he's gone down the British level. He wants the British title and stuff like that. Where I can't fight for any of that, so that's another two, three year down the line. It will go that's along, true. You know? so, so realistically, uh, that fight wouldn't happen. You know, realistically, for for a couple of years, right? Until there's titles, world titles, and things like that on the line. All right. Um, and you're fighting now, April fifteenth at York Hall. Do you know your um? Who your opponent is, or, or where do we stand with that? Um, it's been a bit of a, a melt, to be honest with you. You know, it's been a bit of a melt. We're we're, we're looking for opponents, um, uh, till trade and pull deal. So it's been. Everyone knows me now. You know, everyone knows me. I'm the, I'm not the dark horse no more. You know, um. So, look, we'll have to just wait and see. We have the whole toy, but we'll definitely have a, have a, a great opponent with a great record record come fifteen. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you, um, you got two sensational, really awesome knockouts. You, you got the knockout of Jacob Quinn that we talked about, and then you got the knockout of uh, Jan Marsalek. Which knockout did you like better? Which one did you say, yeah, that's a better knockout? Marsalek. Uh, uh, why did you like that one better? Because he didn't grow up off the ground. Okay, that's true. Quinn did, but Quinn, you know, Quinn got up and he didn't have his legs or anything. But you're right, Moslek stayed on the ground. 
Uh, both knockouts were, were, were vicious. So I, I think you've settled any questions that may have lingered early in your career about your punching power. Uh, never sticking your thorn when you're coming up, you know, you were three and oh, four and oh, people say he's good, but does he have any pop? That's kind of sticking your thorn because obviously you do. Nah, the pop, listen, the pop is there, you know. At the very start, people's like, oh, he, he has this big power, he's this big power puncher coming into the pro game, da da da. And I never, I never learned how to use the power in the pro game. So now I'm set. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down with shots a lot more. I'm not looking for the power. So the power is coming with the speed. And that's it. As soon as you're getting hit, that's it. Lights out. So for the rest of this year, it's only March. Um, how many times do you think you're going to fight this year? And, um, you know, is 140, is that the weight class you're going to stay at? Is You know, you feel comfortable making it? And, and how many times do you think we'll we'll, we'll see you again in, in 2022? Um, I'm hoping to get back out. Um, I'm hoping to do three, three, three this year. Maybe, maybe four. Maybe even push for four. Um, w- listen, oh, I can do. I'll do five, but I've got to spend a lot of time with family. You know, I've got uh, I've got to balance family life as now. So, uh, I think three be three to four be very suitable. Um, what's the, what's... Sorry. Uh, no, three, three or four wins will put you at 11 and 0, 12 and 0 at the end of the year. You know, you do that again in 2023, the 15 0, 16 0. These, you start thinking about a world title, like, okay, 2024 from 16 and 0 or so. You know, that starts to look a little bit more realistic. Yeah, I'm up at that level then, you know. I'll be, I'm up at that level. I'll get there. Where I'll be at, like, I'll be fighting for more money, more investment going into myself, the more better I'm going to be. Getting. Be the only so listen at the end of the day, I'm only gonna get better. I ain't going backwards, join. You, you've gotten you've gotten much better. You gotten you've gotten real good real quick. Uh it's been it's been a pleasure, you know, watching you. Um, do you have any plans? You know, obviously be, being an Irishman, you'd have a big natural market in the US. You can sell tickets in places like Boston, New York, Chicago. Is fighting <laughs> in US if fighting in the US um a goal? Is that something you got you, you want to do eventually? I know, I mean obviously you're happy fighting where you are now, but Fighting in the U.S. and in, in, in those communities that have, you know cities that have big Irish communities, that's something you want to do in the future. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Listen, I love the I love the headline Madison Square Gardens or Boston. I've actually got family in Boston. Um, and then Chicago, of course. Look, at the end of the day, the Irish built America, didn't they? America, so. Uh, so listen, it's a dream to fight over there, and hopefully one day you can fight over there for a title, or maybe even defend the title. And I want to ask you about that. Is there, you know, there's a, like I said, there's a lot of young fighters at 140. There's a lot of good veterans at 140. Um, is there anyone that you have your eye on? Like, okay, I want to fight this guy at some point soon. Do you know what? There's actually not only the champion. Do you know, only the really the champion. But I'm not a guy who calls out people. I'm not a guy who. He'll look at someone and say, oh, I want to fight him. I'm just, I fight every day with myself. So I want to, once I keep improving, get the fights, winning fights, and then, listen, they'll, they'll can't turn away from me. You know what I mean? They'll have to fight me. But I, I want the, I want the champions. And right now there's only one. You know, right now there's only one world champion. Um, is there, you know, uh, you want to fight the champions. Um, it's been an honor. And a privilege. Um, I- I'll give you the last words. Any anyone you want to shout out, and anything you want to you want to tell us before you leave? Nah, I'm all good. I'm all good, Gary. I really appreciate you for having me on. Oh, I want to ask you what what, what part of America are you from? I'm from Texas. You can see a Texas flag over Texas. my head. From Texas. Yeah. yeah. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> in, in in Texas, we kind of view ourselves like Scotland does in the UK. We kind of do our own thing so we had our yeah, own flag yeah. uh but it's an honor it's a pre- privilege to, to get to speak to you pierce i uh, i thank you for your time um and i look forward to seeing you fight april 15th yeah a million percent Gary. and then um, after the fight we'll catch up again on, on another interview absolutely sounds good pierce all no right worries. thanks very much I really appreciate it. thank you